Here we go. All right, welcome everyone. It's Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is the 18th of October, uh, 19th of October, India Standard Time. And uh, remind everyone, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct, so be nice to each other. Uh, let's see, I haven't seen Kristen. Okay, so uh, topics I had on the agenda, adopt a plugin tutorial and blog post for Diraj and me. Then I've got a topic on plugin docs migration that a Hacktoberfest contributor has launched and we'll talk briefly. Then uh, Meg had a question about security chapter. She had a conversation with Daniel Beck and I'd like to capture what she learned from that conversation. And then source structure standards for Jenkins.io uh, with Meg and then classifying wiki pages for migration. Any other topics we should put on the list? nothing from my side okay all right so um adopt a port plug in the tutorial and blog post so the the first recorded session with darren pope went well the second session starts in less than 24 hours and a third session uh likely 48 hours after that I just like to say that Darren's sections and the things that the two of you go were really good a few months ago, and they keep getting better and better and better. I'm just astounded. Yeah, well, he's he's it's a lot of fun working with Darren. He really is very very good. And Cloudy and so, should have him do a class for other bees about how to do videos. Yeah, he 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 truly is exceptional, but he's. He's exceptional because he practices so hard and makes and pays such careful attention. So yeah, right. And he's thought about exactly. All right, Meg. I think we may have lost you sound wise. So let's take a look at about this for a long. So Meg, you just came back for audio. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I that's fine. Now? Okay. We can hear you. So it's, could you say again what you'd said? You'd mentioned, you'd said how well Darren Pope did and then you the audio stopped. Oh, I said that Darren. <laughs> exactly on point. Darren should yeah. do videos. I mean, there's. I'm, I'm noticing how few people know how to make it so you can read what's on their screen when they're talking. Oh, right, right. Yep. We have a lot of, we have a lot of videos that are basically, I know how to do this and I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> yes. God yep. help you if you want to ever try to do it yourself, but. Exactly. All the things, but he's learned. I mean, I know he has, you know, he's been doing good videos for a long time and he's continually learned things. Mm -hmm. We could bundle those up. Right. Anyhow, I'll shut up. Dear, I need to go to bed. Okay. So, in terms of the so the 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 way the first recorded session worked, it covers the first three four, three of the first four topics in the in the contributing to open source workshop notes. We'll probably cover another three or four, maybe five in the next session, and then maybe three or four more with discussion in the third session. And then the idea is each of those chunks of a session will in, embed the video into that page. The page will describe how to do it. And the person can watch the video to get a, a live demonstration of how to do it. And I'm pleased to note we had our first person, Mads Jacobson, uh, actually offer to adopt a plugin based on Whoa. having taken the steps in the workshop. Whoa. So, so big win. Uh, now we've confirmed that. So the skeleton of the submission for Jenkins.io is on on my branch, and we've confirmed that Diraj can also push to that branch. So, so that's that's a, a big win as well. So what we see here is, if we scan down a little bit, um, where is it? We have to go. Back. Oh yes, here we go. So here's Diraj making a change and making another no, and and here we are with me interspersed all on this branch so he and i can contribute together uh, i i had originally dreamt that we would have it ready 
within a few days. My time is not going to allow that. I'll feel very lucky if we get it done before the end of October. Diraj, are you critically dependent on this as part of your Hacktoberfest contributions? Or will you be okay if, we, if we're not able to get this finished before end of October? Uh, well, I've, I, think in, I was thinking about uh, finishing it before October. Now I do think that it's a little bit difficult, so it's okay. Okay, so you're, that's not going to derail or damage your ability to complete Hacktoberfest. Oh, well, I, I think anyway, I'll not be able to do it <laughs> due to office work. So it's totally fine. Oh, oh, right. Of course, you've got a full time job now. That's that, of course. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. OK, good. No problem. All right. So um, I'll be happy if, to review any PRs if it helps. Well, and, and Meg, you are welcome to. Let's see. How could I? Yeah, I may I may send you a pointer to something, Meg, after I've had a little more time to to work it. Uh, I may send you a pointer and ask for a review. I'm, I'm not yet ready to submit a pull request to Jenkins.io because I think, I think we've got enough material in the, in the contributing to open source document that we should rather have you review there first, Meg. And I think you've actually already done that. I've done some of that. Yeah, I could do some more. Yeah. So I don't if you're digging too deep into this, because I want to keep my mind focused elsewhere, but. But I can well, help out a little bit. Well, and that's and that's I feel like Darren and I are already doing the proof of these various pieces, right? right? Because he and I are doing these and we refer to the document and say, okay, let's read this. And, and then we discuss it. And between the reading and the discussing, if there's an error in the document, we'll we'll detect it. So so I'm not overly worried about that. But before I submit a pull request to Jenkins, I, I'd like to have at least 75% of these topics covered in the in the steps so that there's a step for each of them to say, hey, do this and then do this and then do this. Cool. Okay, so um, that's it for, for that topic. Diraj, you are welcome to step away and get some rest before you have to start a new working day. Uh, even if you can only take a 30 minute nap, that may help you be functional at work today. Yeah, that's not a problem. Sure. Uh, so I want to discuss a little bit more on the topic. And uh, the thing is, I after our previous meeting, where you helped me set up the environment on my uh, work laptop, I ran some command to like su sudo make run. And I realized I realized that I don't have sudo permissions. So the commands were not running many other commands as well so so you, should, the... you shouldn't have to do sudo what what made you think you needed to do sudo uh, actually there were some other commands like even the docker command what no, was not running ah then okay. I had now to that, and that i would docker. understand so if hmm. if the user if if you if the building user is not allowed to run Docker, then then you're 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 locked out. Yes, because uh, then I started uh, reading a blog which describes how to download Docker and that had a sudo command. So I realized, oh, it's a, a loop where I'm stuck. So I followed the same procedure that you showed me, and I set up my personal laptop with everything. And uh, it runs the site, it generates the site locally. But the thing is, if I go to, I, my aim was to get, uh, like to see the changes that you've done on the blog post so far, but I'm not able to visit the proper link for that. Ah, oh, okay, so that I can help with. Yes. So, so first step, did you have the correct branch checked out? So let's maybe maybe what we do is let's show the steps there so that you, you can be sure you see it. So steps Mark took would include get checkout 
minus b minus t and then it would be let's see let's do it this way Uh, and it might be this, it depends on what you name my, the upstream. So what that does is check out the correct branch first and then make run. And then when you've done that, open localhost 4242. And now I've got to go find where the page is just a minute. Okay, there we are. And we're just do a make run. So generating the site, localhost 4242, and then in my case, because I'm, I'm running this on a Linux computer, but I use Windows as my primary machine, I'll switch over here and open up that computer's port 4242, and this is the generated site. Now it's developer guide, and you should see it right there. So let's put it this way. that one so that url should should get you there because here you should see this create a plugin tutorial and mm. adopt a plugin tutorial right so what if you go to the url which looks like uh after 4242 can you type node then tags then tutorial no okay so you, you're looking at the blog yes this is what i see but now ah. i know it's a wrong place but i was anyway curious what this is good question yes so undefined method to sim for that oh oh let's see what what do we get ah i know what that is that's you found a bug in the blog post very good and, and that's excellent. That means the blog post is not ready to be published. So well done. Because what this says is... Don't you love Mark Diraj? <laughs> what, exactly. what this says is we've got, we've got an error in the definition of who's in the blog post. So let's, mm. let's, go, let's go see what that error is. Oops. Okay, so if we look comparing ourselves to the master branch, did I spell your name wrong, for instance? Um, no. Your or your let's, let's see. Let's well, let's do this. Get. Let's look at some comparisons to see because it may be that I've simply got a an indentation mistake here in this YAML. And that's why we always can compare something that works and something that doesn't. And how about one that I wrote? Jenkins 21, Jenkins at DevOps wrote, did I write? That? Oh no, wiki attack, let's use that one. That's an infamous one. Okay, so comparing the two, 
huh, no, I don't see a lot of difference there. Okay, so, oh, oh, yes, I do see differences there. <laughs> oh, look at this, what a foolish mistake. So let's look at the differences between these two things so that we can see together what mistake I made. Okay, notice that, okay, title should be different. Tags, okay, it's good, we've got tags, except this one starts with a colon and this one doesn't. So there's a first mistake. Okay. Then two tags. So now if we refine the differences, okay, titles are different. Tags are different, but look at this. Instead of authors up at the top, I have author singular and then list two of them. Right. <laughs> so that could be a problem. Yes. Now, now let's see if that fixed the problem. So mm -hmm. refresh. No, maybe we have to rebuild. Of course, it may also still not be enough. Good, good, good check, by the way. Thanks for finding the problem. Okay, refresh. That's better. And there we are, there you are, there I am, and there is a list of steps. Yes. So now what we do is, is commit the fix. Exactly. So that I'll be able to have it as well. So we should see, there it is. Okay. Log uh, data. All right, now you should be able to see it. Sorry for the disruption there. That It makes it tough to contribute when the thing you're trying to contribute to is completely broken. Not, not a problem at all. So if I just want to uh, submit a, like, like do some changes from my side, just to see whether I'm able to push or not. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest to do on a very quickly uh, basis? Um, add, add a tech, add a line to, uh, add a line to one of these. Uh, for instance, I stop the list at convert common API dependencies. But now if you look mm -hmm. in this, in this list after convert common API dependencies, there's improve pipeline documentation, add a link to report an issue that I just added, I think today, because I discovered, oh, there's a better way to do things. Assign repository, add one of those and commit it. Okay, sure, I can add that. So very stupid question again. So where can I find this file to edit? Mm, yeah, because so- there's lots of that. Yeah, so the, the cheater technique is to do a git log minus minus numstat master dot dot head. So what that says is tell me the log of, tell me all the log entries that are between the master branch and where I'm working now. And the numstat says and list the name of the files. So that's the cheater's way of seeing, oh, there's the file I need to edit. Yes. Now, and back to Meg's point, that's terrible to have that be so hard to read. So let's do it this way. So git log minus minus numstat master dot dot head. So from the master branch to the place where I'm working now. And then there is the file name. And the benefit of this is now you can go backwards and see, oh, and here's also this one and this one. And you can see that I'm not up to date with the real master yet. Okay, now, when you keep your master branch current with the remote master branch, that numstat thing is even more powerful. 
because then it really only shows you your differences. Right. So did that address your question? Yes, I'm, I was able to open the file and I can edit it right now easily as well. Great. Yeah, well, and, and one of the tricks that Darren Pope taught me <laughs> just mm -hmm. during the session he and I were having was this one where I need to remember periodically to go into, um, well, let's go here to my GitHub repository for Jenkins.io. And every so often, it's just good to hit the, let's see, what's a good choice? Let's pick another branch like this one. And then there will be, where is the button that says fetch from upstream? Oh, it's, it's right here is typically where it will appear. Mm -hmm. and, and that gives you, get me the changes from the current upstream. So just learn something new watching Darren do stuff. It was a lot of fun. So suggesting to use that, click on that button whenever you can, so that you're always updated, right? Uh, that's that's a, a certainly a very good practice. At least for me, it's I'm I'm accustomed to managing it all from the command line, and that's a lot easier than using the command line. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, okay. oh, I forgot. We've got one other topic here today. Yes. Jenkins two dot three hundred seventeen change log. Because we've got a release tomorrow. We have to remember to review that. Yes. But we, Meg and I could do that, Diraj. We don't have to keep you awake for that. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, Anything else, Diraj? Um, not, 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 nothing on this topic. I'll be sending a PR just to see if I'm able to push or not uh, in okay. this, at the same time. So we can move on to the next one. All right. So next one is, and I was hoping to have other participants, the person who I was hoping for did not actually arrive. And so we, let's discuss it briefly anyway. Um, there is a plugin, there's a series of plugins called Publish Over, S Publish Over SSH, Publish Over FTP, Publish Over CFS, CIFS that are all based on a core technology plugin called Publish Over X. And the Publish Over X plugin, this one doesn't have its documentation here. And yet on the wiki, it's got pages and pages of very useful, very valuable documentation that applies to every one of those other plugins. And so this is a case where we really need a transition from, from Wiki to this, to this GitHub repository. And it has 74,000 installs. Exactly. So it's also a very, very popular plugin, mm. right? So this is, exactly. this is not some orphan plugin. This is, mm. this is installed on roughly one fourth of all Jenkins installations. Wow. So it's, oh. it's a very, very popular plugin. And, and so, yes, we should get its documentation. What we need to do is convert this Confluence page, which is a bunch of raw HTML. And now if we want to see how it looks, we can say start, what is it? Publish over five, four, there, okay, here we go. So this is how it actually looks. But if you look at that scroll bar, there is a lot of content here and it's, it's actually quite accurate and quite useful. So we need this in order to, for it to be referenced from these three other plugins. So what I propose to the Hacktoberfest contributors, if they're willing, We'd love to have a submission from, from them. Uh, if by end of Hacktoberfest, we don't get it, I think we need to prioritize this ourselves high. So it's basically an exercise in coding, right? It, well, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, a base, it's an exercise in converting from, from this layout to ASCII doc or Markdown. 
And I did get a, right. a commitment from, uh, let's see, so I did get a commitment from uh, Alex Earl. He has agreed to merge, to merge a docs pull request if we'll review it first. Okay. So, so that's, that's a good sign because that means we want, and I think there's a chance, some chance that that merge will be enough to make it visible on plugins.jenkins.io. Where was plugins.jenkins.io? I don't remember. Ah, it's here to fix that. Let me say it this way, merge may be enough. So just FYI for everybody, any, any questions or concerns there? No, no actions for us to take. I hope this new contributor will, will be willing to do it, but if not, then, then we'll, we'll do it ourselves. Through. I could be talked into it I, after I get the security stuff done. Yeah, and I think I think the security stuff is is more valuable for us still than than this. Right, and we've got Dan. I mean, there's a lot of security. They're getting the basic stuff done to reclaim what we've got. We'll get that done, and then the security will be ongoing. But exactly, yeah. We when you mess with when you mess with structure, you kind of got to dig in and get it all done fast. Right. Yep. When you're moving stuff around, but okay, so. I propose we call that topic done and go on to the next topic, the change log review for, for next Jenkins release. Is that okay with everybody? Sure. Okay, sure. so now here we go. Let's look at Jenkins.io change log. Change, automated change log for 317. Okay, here we go. All right, so bump the markup formatter. Okay, I, I, in general, we've been hiding these. I don't think that one is significant enough. This bumping a plugin internal version, I don't think that's significant enough to justify change log for the user. Any, any objections? No, that's correct. You can hide it. Okay, so. Let's go to Jenkins core, core, okay. And it was pull requests, pick one and this one, and we're going to market skip change log. Daniel Beck shrugging. Yeah, we're just gonna label this skip. I don't see, I, I just don't see enough value in that. Okay, next. So mark the cookie is secure when serving. Oh, this one looks good to me. Okay, so this one, the screen resolution cookie, well, or, or do we need to change capitalization that, so screen resolution cookie has the secure flag set when Jenkins is running on HTTPS. So this is a, an enhancement, an improvement to how the thing behaves. So now has. Oh, oh, now has good suggestion. Do we okay, do that? very good. Yes, very, very good. Okay. Because that sort of sounds to me. I'm sitting there. So you're going to tell me what you do? You know, where's the next sentence? It sounds like a lead into something interesting. Right. Okay. So. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay, good. Is Next. there anything more? He had comment. Do we? Never mind. I'm going to shut up. No, no. Go ahead. Get this done. I was going to say in the comments above there, I saw something said about there's nothing secure here or something, but I didn't know if there was more content in the comments that should be reflected in the change log. Yeah. So there's not as bad. Assuming all cookies are equal. So yeah, so given that this is satisfy a scanner, 
and and we like to satisfy scanners, but we don't generally have to tell users we're doing this to satisfy a scanner. Oh, okay. All right, so back to change log. So we agreed that one's okay with the revision to it. Now this one, okay, that is, oh, this one needs two change log entries and this will have to be edited after the fact. Right, so what it's saying is there is the part that's a bug, and then there's the part that is an enhancement, and those two need to be two different things. But we really don't have a facility to do this until after, until after the release. Okay. So what's happening is, let's let's look at the pull request. What's happened is there was a there's a, a, a thing called WebSocket, and in this thing called WebSocket, uh, it allows us to connect an agent to a Jenkins Jenkins controller that is only speaking HTTP or HTTPS. It's a really elegant trick because we can do re remoting over the same port that's serving HTTP pages to web browsers. Uh, but there was a problem there with Java 11. And this resolves that problem as by upgrading us to, to remoting 4.11 instead of 4.10. Then in the process, we also had to, we deprecated a particular command line option and need to document that we've upgraded to remoting. So the real, the real thing is we've got a fix and that's a bug. And then we've got a, a what would you call it? A uh, an enhancement that is we've taken away this this obsolete command line command line argument. Huh. So so I propose we just accept this one for now, and I'll I'll do a fix on it after the release is out tomorrow. Okay, one one question: Could we make this a change long entry, being that we've updated this to remoting four point eleven? And this has two, and then say, you know, this has two consequences, colon, one is it fixes the agent hand state. And second of all, it deprecates the obsolete option. Could, except that then we've got, then we're mixing what the, what's what been classified as a bug and bug an enhancement. And, an RFE. and we True. like to have the two things as separate, separate entries. Okay. That sounds good. Do we? Care the, other, the second one is indented differently than the first one. Well, I'll I'll have to do fixes on, you have on to that do fixes. as well. Okay. Right. That's shutting that's, up now. No, no, it's it's a it's a good point. And I'm not sure if this will render correctly for the initial release of the change log, because okay. I'm a customer of those things being all absolutely aligned, but I don't know how to fix that in the automatic change log generator. We'll just fix it after the release. Okay, cool. All right, then next one is a bug fix, reduce the amount of disk writes to logs, tasks, dot log. I don't know what, okay, that, that I'm not accustomed to files named dot log. Just a minute. Let's go look and see what that, that says. Okay, reduce them. Oh, oh, it's the asterisk. Okay, got it. Uh oh. Now, why did that not? Do we need to escape it? Yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. But the oddity there is, I don't know why the converter stripped the asterisk, but it did. So good that we reviewed it. We need to we need to chase that down. Yeah. Be sure in the final that that didn't that damage doesn't persist. Then next one is fifty seven sixty, and this one looks good to me already. So here's what it says in the change log. It says display ongoing build in build history regression in two dot three hundred fourteen. 
and lots and lots of reports of this one. So we'll be greeted with great happiness. Yeah. Okay, then fast review of all the things. Let's see, let's make the text bigger. Yeah, I'm almost tempted to include updated French translation and link to multiple pull requests to highlight that progress because there's been a lot of really good Hectoberfest work on the French translation. But, but we don't do most other translations, I guess. So maybe we just leave it. Sorry, go ahead, Meg. What, what did you I was say? say? Angelique always get always gets testy about the French it would make her happy if we thought it was important yeah and I think I think it may be worth highlighting I think so too okay that that's it any anything else that you're concerned about on the change log so I had a question about uh, the that pull request which will be converted into two separate change log entries. So in this one, as you were suggesting, the procedure is something like this: that uh, we'll be waiting for the change log to get published on the website, and then we'll be editing the automated, uh, automatically generated change log and uh, creating the two entries. Because uh, since it has been released, so bot will not be, uh, you know, enforcing its changes again. That's why other changes will be holding, right? Correct. Okay. That's yeah, I you, just want you, to cross check that. Yeah, you said it perfectly. You you understood exactly what's going to happen and why it's going to happen. That's very good. Yes, you're exactly right. Awesome. So we, we wait until the machinery is done and then we'll edit it by hand because we can trust that the machinery won't change it afterwards. Right. Okay, got it. Thank you. Excellent. Good. Anything else on change log? Actually, I missed most of the things. Uh, so did, did we make sure that every entry has full stop in the end? Oh, good question. Let's check that. Very good. Okay. So this one we remove. This one has a full stop. This one we've got to edit anyway. Mm -hmm. This one has a full stop. This one has a full stop. So yes, we did. Yes. We, we didn't actually check, but now we have. <laughs> so it looks great. Any other checks we need to do? No, this looks good. All right. All right, then next topics are, so um, Meg, which of these topics would you like to take first? So we've got your summary of your, your discussions with, with Daniel on the security chapter, source structure standard or classifying wiki pages. Um, let's do, let's see if source structure standard goes quickly. Okay, great. If, if it doesn't go, if it doesn't go quickly, it, we probably can't resolve okay. it here. I think it's the only serious disagreement that Daniel and I have. So, but but I guess just the question is, all I found was that one sentence per line thing. Uh huh. And it and Daniel's gone through all this stuff, and we've got these long, long lines. And I, but I think I remember seeing something else, but I think it was something that Liam wrote for Cloudy stuff, where he specified that we try, you know, you try to break things by clause and keep things around eighty characters. Ah, uh, so so and and we've the the other re, the other reviewers on Jenkins.io even skipping Daniel will will advise please give me sentence per line. Okay. So that is the standard. It is, yeah. Oy, ugly. Uh, well, actually, I confess it's been very helpful for me because it it is an immediate detector of run on sentences. Ah. 
I, I, I look at, I look at, I've got, I've got a relatively wide screen. And if I ever wrap on my wide screen, I know that I'm clearly run on. And most of the time I'll think very carefully if I'm much beyond 80 or 90 characters, am I running on, have I put three ands and several, several commas in this thing that I shouldn't have? Yeah. No, it's, you can tell the people, the people who work with line editors like the eyes, like the shorter one, but yes, I've been accused. Somebody looked at once and said, your source code looks like haiku. And it's like, well, so. But. <laughs> right. Okay. So I lose that one. I'll have to suck it up and do it. Okay. Um, let's do the classify. And then I'll, I just copied you on the incomplete document where I'm summarizing what we're going to do for the structure. Oh, um, okay. We can do great. that later. But I got, okay, those we ran into, we've got a bunch of wikis referenced in this stuff. And Daniel's going through, he says, well, that was never here. That's a Python thing. Do it like you do in Python and Jenkins will recognize it. We shouldn't have, a, we shouldn't have anything on that in Jenkins IO. Um, other, a couple of others said that's a really, really narrow band of users that use it. It shouldn't be in Jenkins IO. Um, but I got, and then he said, well, you know, I'll go through them and tell you what you know. Well, there's all, he doesn't know how many there are. He's not going to get, but I got thinking, let's, let's say that he starts going through. What is the mechanism for that? And the best idea that I had was to put a little checklist at the front of each, at the top of each file for each wiki that's in that list where so it would be, you know, the dispensations, it could be, you know, this is worth converting as is. Um, this is a good topic, but the content needs to be rewritten. Um, this doesn't belong, you know, a couple of those that, and that somebody could go through it in the market and then have a comment and they, and put the author who did it. So we could look at it and say, Daniel Beck says this shouldn't go and a place for a comment. So then somebody could say, this was incorporated into the user guide in PR such and such, or, you know, or whatever, it, you know, comments are always handy. But would it, is there any way to do something like that easily so that then when you generate your list, you could search on that and it would knock out anything that had, you know, that somebody had marked as don't do this, let it die. Yeah, so I think, I think if someone's willing to do that kind of a thing, if if they were, for instance, to insert an ASCII.comment, which is two slashes or four slashes, if I, yeah, you can do two slashes for a single line and four. and then um, say, give their, give their statement on the disposition of it, right? It's, uh, wiki.jenkins.io slash Jenkins slash distributed builds is flawed, but worth keeping, but worth rework. Right. Um, or it might be, um, they're doing that free form, there's going to be typos and you're going to have trouble working with it programmatically, aren't you? Well, but, but I'm much less concerned about the programmatic work because the most crucial thing here that we gain is understanding what to do with the thing that is a broken link today. Right. And, and so, so the, the, for me, the real benefit there is The real benefit there is that someone has looked at it and put this comment. And then when we when we're able to address it, they can they can then say, all right, we've addressed this by and delete the comment that says, hey, such and such is rubbish, uh, needs complete replacement, complete uh -huh. rewrite. Or this topic should not be in Jenkins docs. Right, exactly. Delete uh, irrelevant. Right. 
uh -huh. and, and maybe that's the better way to say it, is irrelevant. And that's our way of, of declaring should not be in the docs at all. Well, I think there's there are two. There, one is the topic. The topic is good, but the content is crap. It's rubbish. Right. Um, the other is that the topic is irrelevant. Ah, yes, very good. Uh, um, topic is good. Uh, content is flawed, but worth rework. Right. Or it might be. And I think we've already got most of the ones that fit this next category. Um, a, B, C, topic is good, content is good. Mm -hmm. And there it's just copy it in then. Um, another thing, it, what I can see is even if Daniel hadn't made this offer, which I know he's not gonna be able to completely come through in, but in doing this, we're hitting, actually this one, we've got eight or 10, links that we look at those and there might be a couple of them that I would mark and say this was incorporated into Jenkins IO with this PR. Because for well, whatever see that if it's if was. it's been in if it's been incorporated into Jenkins.io, then we should just delete the reference to the wiki and hyperlink to the Jenkins.io location. Okay, but then when you list out when we list out the repo that's got all these in. And I look at that, how do I know that somebody's already taken care of this? Oh, you 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 don't have to. We use, I, I think we should use Jenkins.io as the source of the information here to decide which things we bring in from Wiki. As the, fir the first choice is, oh, bring this from the source if it's referenced on wiki.jenkins.io. So now if it's not already referenced on wiki.jenkins.io, then an ASCII-doc comment won't do because the, the source document is not ASCII-doc. Right. Am I making it clear here? So, so oh, yeah, that's right. I was thinking, yes, that's right. I was thinking of inserting something into those files. Ah, so you were thinking of inserting uh, in something repos. into the HTML files. Right. Ah, okay. So, and that, that would also work um, if we're doing that annotate the um, the source repositories, the annotate the confluence data files with the same type of info, that would be great, but that's, that's um, almost 3000 files. Right. That's why I'm thinking, but if I look at one of them, if, if, you know, if Daniel looks at one of them and is in there and has something to say, if we made it really simple for him to record that, it would be recorded. And if another mm, Yeah, yeah, that, it could, could insert the same annotation as an HTML comment, right? And then I'm thinking about putting the boilerplate for that HTML comment into each trial with a note about if you're looking at this and you have something to say, and it would be all they would really have to do is mark a checkbox and give their name. Yeah, so so that I'm hesitant to do just because, well, I, I, we certainly can. It just feels like that's a recipe for lots and lots of, I'm not sure what they'll get from it. Because I don't, I, as I think about who's going to review those files, I don't think there are many of us that will review them. At least if there were a lot of people longer. willing to review them, I would have expected there were a lot of people willing to help us migrate them. And that's not been our experience. No. Um, so, uh, but, but it's, I think it's, it's it worth asking. Keep, it would, it, I'm thinking that it would be, the, it would, it strikes me, it would be harmless if nobody uses it. And I mean, even, a few of them, it might save some duplicate. If if you look at, you know, if Jesse Glick looks at something, he can say, oh, Daniel Beck already marked this as irrelevant. Yes, I yeah, don't need that's to worry about true. it. Yep. Um, well, it gives but, us a history, especially as people, as the staffing changes, et cetera, et cetera. But, but I, don't, then, I don't know if it's. 
then isn't it that we we probably don't even want it as a classification comment in that case we probably want it because right now those that confluence data is is for me largely unusable because it's rendered as raw html right, right. i'm not seeing those files as their actual content i'm seeing this html markup that i just really struggle to read yeah what i would there want is, no, is, is there, go ahead yeah i want markdown or ascii doc or well render it as html and show me show me a way that i can see it right i'd like to see something closer to here let's take this file as our example no let's take one that i care that matters to me so let's pick Here we go. Ace editor plugin. Yeah, this is a good one. All right. So if we take that file name and in this start, this is how it actually looks, right? I think right. if we wanted a comment here that somebody had visited this, it should probably be visible in this view of the file not just in the pure HTML. So rather than a comment, it would actually be some, you know, a heading down at the bottom that says um, classified by so-and-so or un not yet, not yet reviewed. I agree. Yeah, so how did we, cause let's, okay, let's say that one of these, the information's good, it's a good topic. And I say, you know, and it, yeah, I was linking to it here, but I'll just move it over to Jenkins IO. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it looks easier to take the rendered and copy and paste the text and just put the ASCII doc stuff in. I agree. For me right now, that's now there is there is the wiki exporter. So there's the Jenkins wiki exporter here, which may be able to help us because I think it has whoops, I think it has a facility to take general a general purpose web page to do the wiki export. Let me see though. Okay, this is export Jenkins Confluence Wiki URL. Don't know if that, I don't know if this thing works anymore or not. So this, I, I would suspect it won't like me giving it this file. No, yeah, it doesn't. So, so it's, it's got sanity checks in it. So we don't have anything that will do the markdown conversion for us right now. But I think if we ask nicely, we could probably persuade um, Gavin Mogan to help us with that if we need it. If we get lots of requests yeah. for the short term, for me, it's easiest just to read this HTML and paste it into ASCII doc. Yeah. Okay, so did that did that address your question there, Meg? Uh, still don't know exactly. I still don't know exactly what we do with one of these. Um, whether you know, just Meaning as a, you know, with, if if we look like last night, Daniel and I are looking at it, uh -huh. and I would have loved to somehow or other quickly mark the file that Daniel had looked at this and said such and such. Mm. But that may not be useful. That may just be me. Well, but I think I think it's certainly that could be done. That can be done if we can get a a reasonable way of getting these pages into a an HTML site like GitHub Pages. Then we could possibly just have a hyperlink at the bottom that says "Edit this page," and you ah. click "Edit this page," and it drops you into the GitHub editor, and you put a comment at the bottom of the file. That would work. Like, hey, we reviewed this and it could be as simple as plain text because plain text renders just fine in HTML. Mm -hmm. That would work. And then okay. maybe you don't need this. Would this put you in a position where eventually you could have your list of wiki pages that still needed work that would get to be a smaller size? Right. Good. Yep. So Meg, I'm going to pause for just a moment. We're almost out of time. And Diraj said he had one more topic. 
So we're about one minute from end here. And Diraj, yeah. what was your topic? Yes, thanks. So I noticed that even after having Hacktoberfest label on the PR, uh, it's it's not still being counted. And then I went to the page and read the rules. And I think it says that uh, if the project is not participating and you want your PR to be counted, you need to have the label called Hacktoberfest dash accepted. I think even even when it's merged. Yes. Oh, OK. All right. Well, so then we better get that get that noted thank you thanks for the pointer thanks so should i uh, message on the pr to the yes, maintainer please. That came? yes okay. please hey apparently in order for it to be counted it needs the hacktoberfest dash accepted label sure i'll do that that's it thanks yeah thank you And they could also, they can either assign Hacktoberfest as a topic. To their plugin repository, right? Right. Or they can label as Hacktoberfest dash accepted. Yeah. So could you double check with Rajan Singh to be sure that his pull sure. request was accepted, the the change was merged, et cetera. We just want to be sure that it was it was correctly account credited to him for Hacktoberfest. That's a good idea. I'll check with them today and we'll uh, comment accordingly. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Anything else before I go get some sleep? And before Diraj yeah. should get some sleep and probably won't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that's yeah, correct. Um, just that Daniel and I are at peace. Um, yeah, and I just copied you. The, the Google Doc is not complete, and it's it's not being written really for public consumption. It's kind of high level to keep us online. But uh, if you want to see what we're up to. OK, and that's, that's the security chapter organization discussion. Right. Excellent. Thanks, Meg, and so much. Any, Thank any you. Any input, very welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you a bunch for doing that. Deeply, deeply appreciated. Oh, it's been bugging me for forever. So I'm glad I got a chance to do it. So. Oh, thank you. And I love. I love working with, you know, we had this little thing we should talk. And so I'd kind of written to him. And I said, well, I can do it any morning this week, your time. And, you know, about 1130 last night, I was fixing dinner and I get, you want to do it now? So I turned off the stove and we did it. So, All right. Excellent. but on the PRs, there was kind of this give and take this, it wasn't meshing. And, but as soon as we started talking, we both were pretty much had the same mindset. So it was pretty easy to put it together. So very good. All right. Thank you very much. So I will, we're going to end the session and I'll post the recording eventually. Thanks all. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 I knew how to drive this end button. It's just determined not